now getting into our first question. How can we see user paths for page paths for user journeys? So looking at a user's journey through your website is an area that I really like to use in exploration. So if you come over here to explore, and in this case, path exploration. So I'm going to open this up. And by default, it is going to look like this when it loads eventually. There it is. So this is the default, what it looks like when you first open it. In this case, it's using event names. So in this case, session start, page view, session start, first view, et cetera. And I can open these up to see more. Again, it's GA4. We got to allow some time for loading. So if I want to know where they went after a view promotion event, I can click that and so on and expand this. Besides event names, I can also hit start over. And in this case, I can start a starting point or an end point. Starting point is great if you want to know where people went after they visited a certain page or did a certain action. Ending point is great if you want to know how people got somewhere or to a certain action. So in this case, I'm going to hit starting point and I have a choice here. I can do event name, page title and screen class, page title and screen class, or page path and screen class. And really what you want to choose here is really going to depend on what you're looking at or what you want to know. So in this case, I want to know a page path. So I'm going to let that and I'm going to select my starting point. You do have to choose a single starting point. Um, so in this case, let's say I know Shop New is a really big landing page for my site. And I'm really curious where people are going after that. So I just click this. Not set here just means that there isn't a URL for where those people are going. So I'm just going to kind of overlook that. Shop apparel. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of apparel shop clearance. I'm going to open that. Okay, interesting. Let's say, okay, so some of these people are going shop new and then they're going to my homepage. Where are they going after my homepage? I want to know that. So again, I can expand these and I can expand these a pretty good amount. It is slow, however, that is one of the downsides. Another one of the downsides is like all explorations. By default, this is only going to be available for me to view. And by me, I mean the user that I'm currently signed in as. So if you're sharing your GA4 account across an organization, just because you create uh, an exploration doesn't mean your teammate is going to be able to see it. You're going to have to share it with them. And then by default, it's going to be shared in read-only mode. So they won't even be able to change the date. And we can talk about how to make a copy so that they can edit it. However, that's not always going to be the easiest way to make sure you're both looking at the same thing, unfortunately. Another downside is that if I want to come in, uh, let's say, so right now I'm going off the homepage, you can see by the little lines here. Let's say I want to change to product lifestyle. It's going to take a moment to load. And again, this is getting big. This is getting ugly. And so you do kind of need to have a little bit of a goal as opposed to just clicking and, and starting on these things. I can also change some of these. So let's say I want to change this to event name. I'm guessing it's page view just because of what I'm seeing these events. And at, here you can see I can mix and match, but it did get rid of everything I had in this column. So everything after that. So again, something to think about. Additionally, this works kind of like Google Docs and that it's live saving what I'm doing. So I can't make this change and be like, shoot, I want to go back to that the way I had it looking an hour ago. That's not really an option. There is an undo button. But again, if I want to go back six changes ago, that can get a little finicky. Again, ending point can be a really, really valuable thing to look at. So in this case, I'm going to choose ending point. In this case, I'm interested in event name. And I'm interested in, I would like to see purchase. Is purchase available on you? Purchase. So I'm interested in how people got to my purchase. Okay, good. I can see add payment info. Great. So people are adding their payment info. I can see scroll, page view, add shipping info. Great. View item list is a little interesting. Apparently they went straight from viewing a list to purchase. Not sure how that's doable, but good to keep an eye on. This can also be a really valuable exploration if people maybe have an interesting way of getting to your purchase event, if there's different methods, ways people can check out, if they maybe can like Express checkout in your cart. That might be something that this report can help you understand how many people are doing that. Also, perhaps you have a landing page that is getting a ton of traffic and you are really curious about like what's going on here and you've determined it's a landing page. 
having a forward one to maybe help you figure out where people are going can really, again, help you kind of figure out what's going on.